This is a snailing invasion video review for pwnem.com. This game is currently available for 240 Microsoft points on the Xbox Live indie game marketplace. Alright, I'm gonna talk about drone survival in this review, even though the game offers other modes, but despite it offering uh, Xbox Live multiplayer, I was unable to locate any players to play with, and I was unable to try out local multiplayer, so uh, the only single player mode per se is drone survival, and you could also play it cooperatively, but like I said, I played solo for this uh, review. And basically, as, as you'll see, the game is quite similar to uh, Worms as well as Lero for those of you familiar with either with either title. The only thing is though that unlike in Worms, this game is not turn-based. Pretty much just thrown in the battlefield right and you can move around at any time. Another cool thing about it is that one of the two things that I loved about Worms it was the uh, jetpack and the grapple hook, both of which are available in this game. And unlike in Worms, uh, you can pull them out at any time and they both have unlimited use. The only thing is though that the um, the jetpack can only you can only use it for a few seconds and then it wears off because it uses your energy. But as long as you let the the green bar fill up again, you can use it once again. As far as your health, that's uh, indicated by the uh, the uh, red bar right next to the green one. And uh, you know, basically right now I'm just digging around the map, locating the drones. The way survival mode works is that basically take on uh, waves of drones and after the wave ends you basically get your health restored which is a nice feature but there are no uh, health packs as far as I'm concerned and um, those little disc things there's two ways to kill them you can actually just straight up you know blow them up with your weapons or you can kind of trigger them and then blow them up you gotta be careful when doing that though, when you by triggering them, as you can actually blow your, yourself up. Obviously it's not gonna kill you on impact, unless you have a little bit of amount of health left, but it's not a good strategy per se. Another thing is too, your own weapons can hurt you, so you have to be careful, especially when using uh, guns like the Shredder, which throw these little sharp things there that explode. If you, get, if you touch it or come near, near an explosion, you know, your health will be affected. And due to the uh, destructible environments, you might want to recreate some of it. And the way you do that is playing around with the matter bomb. And it creates these uh, dirt looking orbs, which I thought was pretty cool. Especially if you want to like patch up those holes in the map where you might accidentally fall out or something. It's a, it's a good way to prevent that from happening. The only thing that I didn't like, though, is its appearance. I mean, the game, for the most part, had pretty good visuals, but the only thing that I was unimpressed with was the way the matter bombs look. I mean, it gets the job done, but I, I felt that the dirt could have had a little bit more detail to it than just simply being brown. But then again, it is called matter, so not a big deal. Anyways, this is another map. <clears throat> and uh, basically... I'm getting close to uh, unlocking something else with the research points. And basically the way it works is that for every enemy you kill, you get some points. And uh, it's denoted by the, the little green test tube looking thing or whatever it's called, whatever that's called. And basically once you've reached enough, by as the game indicates, you'll unlock the next class or set of weapons. And there you go, I just unlocked the commando. And uh, there you go, I'm going to switch to it so that when I respawn, I will be in the new class. I can, check, I can play around with that. And yeah, I just killed myself. As also, if you if you haven't noticed, the research needed has changed, and the reason for that is because there's a lot more stuff to unlock. So, as I got the other, I guess you could say, uh, checkpoint, if you will. Uh, this is it, the game creates a new one for the next uh, weapon or class that's left to unlock. There's actually quite a few in the game. Although, unfortunately, playing alone and 
kind of a slow process. It's one of the bad things about solo play. But if you find some other people to play with online or have some friends over, you can definitely speed it up and you can have a lot of fun unlocking things. And another cool weapon I'm going to showcase is the uh, the magnetic turret. And basically it's exactly what the name states. It's a magnetic turret that you place it and it helps you defeat uh, enemy drones. One thing though to keep in mind with this is that if you switch classes or... Yeah, if you switch classes it's no longer going to be there. And also you can't place more than one. So if you place it again it will basically just disappear and respawn in a new spot. So, you know, trying to set up a cheap form of defense with it, it's just not going to cut it. Overall, my biggest gripe with the game was the fact that they didn't have any AI enemies and also that it was hard to find someone online to play with. Um, it's not really an issue with the game itself, though. It's more or less the online community. And I guess that's attributed to the fact that uh, Xbox Live indie games don't really get much exposure. So I think that... Uh, once enough people find out about the game, hopefully they'll uh, hop online. It will definitely make the game a lot more enjoyable as, as it stands right now. Although drone survival is fun, it kind of wears thin if you're playing by yourself. So I would definitely only recommend it at this point if you can convince either some of your uh, Xbox Live friends to buy it or if uh, you plan on playing it locally. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and uh, check out some of our other reviews over at pwnem.com.